untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt Tyvar deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the new 3 mana Planeswalker from Phyrexia All Will Be One. Starts out at 3 loyalty and has a passive ability saying we may activate abilities of creatures we control as though those creatures had haste. The plus 1 can untap up to 1 target creature and the minus 2 will mill 3 cards and then we can return a creature with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard straight to the battlefield. So Tyvar is a pretty interesting build around. The first instinct is to play it in an elf deck where we can immediately tap our creatures for mana, maybe untap a mana elf to make an extra mana, and that's certainly a valid approach. But in standard we have a few more tools that synergize with Tyvar, and those include Blood Tithe Harvester, which we can immediately activate to maybe take out an opposing creature, and then also get back with a minus two. So with a Tyvar out we could potentially play Harvester, kill a creature, get it back, kill another creature, which is great. And then the Awesome Synergy also comes with Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which is a card that we often get to transform, but we don't always get to activate since it often gets removed by the opponent as soon as possible. But now with Tyvar we can immediately activate our Reflection of Kiki Jiki, copy a card like Harvester, even untap our Reflection with Tyvar to make another copy and completely decimate the opponent's board. Fable was already very good alongside Harvester and now Tyvar completes that trifecta. Then our deck has a few other powerful 2-drops that we can get back with Tyvar, including the new Canker Bloom, a 3-2, which can be sacrificed for 1 mana to either destroy an artifact, enchantment, or to proliferate, which can also come up, maybe add an extra loyalty to one of our planeswalkers. We can also add an extra counter to our Fable, so we can maybe transform and get a reflection a turn sooner. And then we can also add an extra plus 1 counter to a Gala Greeters, which is another 2-drop that plays well in a deck with lots of cheap creatures, as we can add plus 1 counters to it, make a treasure token which also has a few synergies across the deck or gain two life and then our final two drop is tenacious underdog which can be blitzed out of the graveyard so if we happen to mill it with time force minus two we can also get it back and then all these three powered two drops also set up our obnixilus beautifully which we can play on turn three with casualty so we'll get a token that's a copy of obnixilus that's not legendary and then at the original obnixilus they will both have three loyalty if we sacrifice a three powered creature so we can minus two both of them or maybe minus two one of them to make a 1-1 one, one devil that deals one damage when it dies while plussing the author which will drain the opponent for two unless they discard a card as well as a gain two if we control a demon or devil token and then we can also realistically get to the minus seven ultimate in this deck especially with the help of canker bloom to make a player draw seven cards and lose seven life so it can be a great source of card advantage or can be a way to finish off an opponent that's low enough and then we have a couple 1-drops to round out the deck. Voldaren Apicure can make an extra blood token as well as deal 1 damage when it enters. Can be a nice chum blocker, can also be sacrificed to set up our Obnixilus. And also not the worst to copy with a reflection to make extra blood tokens, deal extra damage. And then we also have some cheap removal spells with a new Annihilating Glare, which is a sorcery that destroys a creature or planeswalker. But as an additional cost we either have to pay for mana or sacrifice an artifact or creature. So the fact that our deck makes a few artifact tokens between blood tokens and treasures also means we can easily cast a one mana glare and then we also have four copies of voltage surge to deal two damage at instant speed but we can also sacrifice an artifact to deal four damage instead so these are both very efficient removal spells that work quite nicely in a deck that's capable of making a few artifact tokens and then fable doesn't need an introduction the shaman can also provide extra treasures and the second chapter can help us improve our hand and then a mana base has a few new goodies as well with the new fast lands Black Cliff Cliffs and Copper Line Gorge allow us to curve out a lot better when we want to cast some cheaper spells. And then the fact that our curve stops at 3 mana means that these coming into play tapped later in the game is not a huge drawback. And then we still have our Proving Ground as a tri land that can be cycled late game. A couple pain lands and then a few basics as well as the channel lands to offer a tiny bit more interaction. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is uh, maybe missing some powerful 3 mana spells, but a double Gala Greeters is a decent start. Let's see what we're up against. Okay, Soldiers. And Obnixilus was a good draw. Could have been a reason to play Canker Bloom first, but I'm likely to go Gala Greeters number 2 and keep up Voltage Surge. Alright, Harbin 
not an immediate threat. So we'll make a treasure and pass. And then now we have an artifact to sack to both Surge and Glare. Officers acceptable. And a veteran we can take out with Surge. Okay, Tyvar can maybe get back Canker Bloom. Although for now, maybe play Canker Bloom, and then we can glare, sacrificing an artifact. Problem is, Harbin's not really a must kill with glare. Could of course like attack with the greeters, trade one off, and then get it back with Tyvar. But then Harbin kills our planeswalker. So yeah, maybe we're forced to take out Harbin. So for now we'll make a bunch of treasure, and then glare, sack an artifact, kill Harbin. No attacks. At some point we can also use Canker Bloom to proliferate, adding counters to greeters and loyalty to our planeswalkers. There's a siege veteran, would have been a higher priority target for removal, but that's okay. The flyer was going to be kind of annoying. Take our turn. So now we could play up Nixilus, sacking Canker Bloom, and then still play Tyvar in the same turn. Don't think Canker Bloom's attacking first, since they could probably trade for Officer. And our opponent concedes. All right, fair enough. So. Can make a devil, trigger Gallagreeders a bunch, plus the token Obnixilus in case we make another one, and then Tyvar get back Canker Bloom and triggers Gallagreeter once again, and then we can maybe proliferate on the following turn to start getting closer to an ultimate. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's got a lot of potential. Just need to find black mana ideally on turn two. But we've got an epic here, so we can always discard and draw to get deeper into our deck. At the very least we can play a Fable on 3 now, which can also fix our mana. Opponent's Naya Colors could be a token deck. Right, so we don't have a turn to play unless we want to sack the Blood Token now and see if we can maybe find a tapped land we can play, or we can keep it around. But we'll be able to make more Blood Tokens later. So I don't mind drawing here, and then underdog, we typically don't mind discarding. Okay. So Fable on 3, still the plan. And then hopefully we get to make a treasure token. Steel Seraph. Might have to take out with Glare. Alright, there's our Proving Ground, a draw step late. But uh, still happy to play Fable. Steel Seraph probably gains Vigilance here to stay back and hold off the Shaman. Or Lifelink if they have another blocker. So our late game should be quite powerful. The shortage of black mana could hurt us. And hesitant to discard Tyvar since we might want a second one to get back Harvester. Could get rid of a Crucible. Okay, and then start by attacking. Pono could have a Wandering Emperor to flash in, which could ambush the Epicure, so I think I'm only attacking with a Shaman token. And then now Canker Bloom can also destroy artifacts, which is Steel Seraph. So now the efficient play would be Harvester plus Canker Bloom, which I don't mind. Could also play Tyvar, but Tyvar next turn is going to be pretty exciting with uh, Fable transforming. So we can maybe save that. 
Could have also not played Harvester, so we can at least sacrifice Ganker Bloom, blow up Steel Seraph if the opponent tries to remove it. But Tyvar can get it back. So we'll see. Not sure what the opponent is setting up. Maybe a big score end of turn. Just a Crucible to make two 1-1s. One Makes me less afraid of a Sweeper at least. So yeah, next turn if we play Tyvar we get to activate Reflection right away. Copy Harvester. Two Blood Tokens can take out a Steel Seraph. And then Tyvar can even untap our Reflection to activate once again if we have the mana for it. So we'll take three. Okay. So we only get to activate our Reflection once here. Opponent could also try and remove Harvester in response. But let's see. Okay, that happens. So, step one, activate Reflection. Opponent reading Tyvar to understand what's happening here. Okay, Braid kills Reflection, that happens sadly. But we still get our token, which will take out Steel Seraph. And then Tyvar doesn't have anything besides Underdog to get back, so we probably just end up plussing after attacking for a bunch. We'll keep Harvester around. They want a double block Canker Bloom, that's fine by me. Okay. We can do this all day. So between double Tyvar, double Glare, Harvester in play, we can remove the next couple creatures our opponent plays. And in the meantime, we can apply a bit of pressure with what we have in play. Invoke Justice makes sense. So that's going to be a 9-8 Steel Seraph. Still dies to a 1-mana Annihilating Glare. So not too concerned. Could also decide to just get back a Canker Bloom and blow up Steel Seraph that way. And then keep Double Glare available. Sure. Share in my glory. And then we'll Blitz Underdog to try and draw another Black Source. Tank with Halt. Boon falls to 10. And we get to draw. Gala Greeters can gain some more life back. So I'm not hitting our position. Sanctuary Warden's a good one. Voltage Surge can remove one shield counter, although Harvester with uh, three blood tokens can take it out. So what's our plan? Can take our draw step for now. Have quite a few options. Could play Gala Greeters, and then Voltage Surge remove the shield counter, Glare to finish it off. Or I can sack Harvester, taking out the token, bring it back, play another Tyvar, and then get rid of the Warden. Sure. And then I can afford to play Gala Greeters as well. Ended up finding an Apicure, which also could have helped. So now we have three blood tokens, minus six, minus six. And Tyvar could minus to get back another harvester in case they answer Tyvar. We're in this together. And we'll get a plus one counter. 
and attack. Okay. Still have double glare in hand. Underdog to blitz out of the graveyard. So we'll see what they can come up with. Another Sanctuary Warden. Don't think that's going to save them, because now Harvester is enough to take it out. And either Surge or Glare deals with the token. Okay. Blitz Underdog, Grow Gala Greeters, and Smash. Alright, awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is great. We've got Apicure to set up Harvester, and then just need a third land for Tyvar. So sure, we'll play Proving Ground. We can curve Harvester into Tyvar. Gallic Reaters, also nice. And since Tyvar will give Harvester haste to activate, we don't need to play it right now. Although I expect some removal here either way. Wedding announcement from our opponents. And now we'll go for Fable. The sooner the better. Eventually hope to find a Canker Bloom to destroy the enchantments. Augury to proliferate. Although if they proliferate announcements, they're gonna get fewer tokens over time, so opponent decides not to. Maybe don't need Epicure as much. And maybe one Voltage Surge can go as well, keep Glare for larger creatures. Try and hit our land drops a little bit. So, can attack for opponent double blocks. We voltage surge. And then we'll see what's up. Opponent takes it. In that case, could still tie our minus get back Gala Greeters. And have voltage surge available. Although Greeter is not the best blocker in the face of two one ones. So maybe we just play Harvester, keep up Surge. And then next turn Tyvar allows us to immediately activate Reflection to wreak havoc on the opponent's board. Sorin, not a big deal. Can take it out with either a Glare or deal for damage to it. Finds a backup Sorin. Okay, end of turn. Probably fine to kill a token. Okay, so we can Tyvar, activate, untap, activate again. I have I believe in you, friend. Take out both tokens and kill Sorin. Yeah, this is a powerful turn. And our opponent needs to deal with this engine. Otherwise we can take out their creatures over and over again. And if they kill Harvester, Tyvar just gets it back. Emperor can exile. Reflection most likely. Although I guess exiling Harvester means we don't get it back with Tyvar. But Reflection makes more sense. Canker Bloom deals with the enchantment if needed. So decisions, decisions. Maybe get back Greeters for starters. It's not a victory and then both Fable and Canker Bloom to enable it. And I'll definitely make at least one treasure. And let's get a plus one counter. Finish off Emperor, hit for three. 
and then get a treasure so we can still activate Canker Bloom in the event of a sweeper. I can at least take out the festivity. Could also decide to proliferate, so we get our reflection a turn sooner, which may be worth it. And then I also get an extra counter on Greeters and an extra loyalty on Tyvar. Urza assembles the Titans, interesting. Well, proliferating can also mess up the sequencing on Urza, but we can also just destroy it if we'd like. Might be able to present lethal next turn, 10, 12, yeah, opponent seems pretty dead. So no need to sacrifice anything if I don't want to. Although we might go with a sweet play of end of turn proliferating. And then the fact that they can put a Planeswalker in I guess could be bad if they have another Wandering Emperor in hand. So I probably should avoid proliferating onto that one. So proliferates over here. And then... Don't need Glare and Tyvar. Alright, Pona scoops it up. So what could we have done here? End of turn. So by proliferating here, we get to transform our Reflection, and then thanks to Tyvar we can immediately activate our Reflection. Tyvar could also mine us to get back Canker Bloom, for instance, so we get to copy that with our Reflection, attack with it, and sacrifice its second main, all while growing Gala Greeters and making more treasure. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is... Not the most synergistic, also cannot cast Tyvar with our current mana, so it's pretty awkward. Take a mulligan. Not a great hand, but I'll keep it. And we get to curve 2-drop into a potential 3-drop if we draw it. So at least our mana's good. Okay, Nixilis is nice. Can play one with quite a bit of loyalty to start out. But first we will get our attack in. And hope there's no counterspell. Opponent has a make disappear. At least we still get our casualty token copy. Make a devil. And next turn start blossing our hands. Leaves a lot to be desired. So it's going to be an uphill battle. Opponent passes. And step one plus. Opponent cuts down our devil. So we don't get to gain any life. By coin or carnage, tribute is owed. At least we've got an active planeswalker. Still gonna run out cliffs, even though we could discard it to the blood token. Could probably use four mana. And then do I discard a removal spell end of turn here? Surge with a blood token at least deals four at instant speed, which could be important. So I'll wait. But now we can probably get rid of the forest. Plead for mercy. Opponent falls to 11, so managed to do quite a bit of damage in the meantime at least. We'll attack, if they flash an Emperor we can answer it at instant speed as well as the token. And I think just sack the blood token now, in case we find a 3-drop we want to play. Abandon Meyer can eventually get back up Nixilis, so I'll hang on to it. And a scrutiny to draw two. Okay, so our opponent's a pretty pure control deck from the looks of it. Canker Bloom. So what's the move? I think I keep plussing with Nixilis, since if I minus a sweeper might be incoming. Uh, especially if I play Canker Bloom, we kind of force him to. So, gonna attack, plus Obnixilis, and then if they kill Canker Bloom, I can at least proliferate, add a loyalty to Obnixilis, get closer to an ultimate. Canker 
can pay for a make disappear. Opponent can of course decide to discard a card instead of losing two. Defy me, and, you and they discarded a land here. Alright, we'll pass. Does nothing end of turn. That's promising. Although now with six mana, the fireworks could start happening. Cut down lots of proliferate. We need seven loyalty to ultimate here. So it's still gonna take a while. Okay, attack for one. And then now. Probably okay playing a tapped Proving Ground. Okay, opponent had the Wandering Emperor after all. So how do we want to deal with it? We can Voltage Surge the token. And then Glare. We cannot quite cast to finish off the Emperor. But killing the token I think still makes sense. So they cannot pressure up Nixilis as much. I won't be able to channel Abandon Mire, so maybe I end up cycling Proving Ground. Keep plussing. <laughs> Pleasure doing business. Although, we are probably in a spot where we want to cast a 5 mana glare now to finish off Emperor. In which case, I guess I'll need an extra land in play. So I'll play the Tri Land. So we can maybe still channel Abandoned Mire. Put him down to 6, but it's not gonna stay that way for long, presumably. Emperor makes a Samurai. Keep watch for intruders. And a Might Stone. Okay, can draw 2. So now Glare kills Samurai and we can finish off Emperor. Perhaps. Another of Nixilis. Okay, let's give that a try. They could have a make disappear, which uh, still gets us even if we play Mire. That worked. All their opponents got a ton of mana now, especially for artifacts. If we do get a chance to minus seven next turn, we can just win the game if we target our opponents. Although, if they end up gaining life, I might want to draw 7 myself, in which case I could use the extra mana. And then we have a backup of Nixilis now anyway. So probably don't need Mire as much. So can they find an answer to my Planeswalker or gain life? Is the question. Scrutiny need to draw 3. Okay, so they left themselves with black and white mana. Maybe a Fateful Absence will still save them. But no opponent explodes, yeah, next turn can just minus 7, deal 7 to our opponent, and win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not that great, but we do have some cheap removal and artifacts to enable it. So I'll try it. And hopefully we'll find an exciting 3-drop to kind of top off our curve. Tyvar helps. So turn 1, Epicure. One seems to have a cut down. It's pretty aggressive to take out Epicure instead of saving it. So they might have more spot removal in hand. Conscript points towards a more aggressive mono black build. Okay, can go with a tapped proving ground, keep a voltage surge. Although killing Conscript feels pretty bad. So we could also play Canker Bloom anyway. Gonna lose a bit of life to my Lenor Wastes is the downside. Maybe I should just go tap Proving Ground Pass, if we expect him to have removal for my 2-drop anyway. And then I could deal 4 damage with Surge, enough to take out a Liliana. So I think I take 2, wait and see what else they play. Misery Shadow, perfect. That I'm happy to take out. Another Voltage Surge. So I've got a couple options. Tyvar could get back Epicure, although if they kill Epicure, Tyvar dies. 
So I think I prefer Canker Bloom, keep up Surge. Also important to take out Shadow, which exiles our creatures otherwise. So do we want to trade here? Yeah, that might be okay. Well, their opponent's stuck on two, so their hand is all action. So we're probably the ones that need to apply pressure before they get to the late game where they might take over. Although if I trade, Tyvar can get back Canker Bloom, and we can remove whatever creatures they play next. So this should still be fine. Another conscript. I should probably just take out now. And then Tyvar getting back Canker Bloom means that if they kill Canker Bloom, at least I can proliferate. And then we've got a blood token to maybe discard Lenor Wastes and hopefully find some of our other three mana plays soon. Another Tyvar. So I could minus again. See what else we mill. Underdog, we can blitz now. So get back Canker Bloom, and then just blitz Underdog. And at this point, I'm okay playing out the extra land. Okay, so that's the advantage of milling a few cards if you have Underdog in the deck. Another Canker Bloom. And a Misery Shadow. That's going to be a bit of a problem, so we might want to take it out with Glare. Before blitzing Underdog again. And then I'll keep playing out my land since we seem to have a lot of ways to spend our mana. Bone at a 10. So, yeah, hopefully we can overpower them before they manage to eventually stabilize. Three mana. And a Trespasser, ouch. So Exile's Underdog. No more Blitzing. Glare can take out Trespasser, discard Gorge, attack for three. Yeah, that's probably the move. Otherwise, Tyvar could minus, but at the moment, Apicure is the most exciting creature. So if our opponent's about to play Shieldred, we're in big trouble. Four mana. And a Lilian of the Veil. Okay. Takes out Canker Bloom, and then Tyvar can minus to get it back next turn and play another one. Ooh, Obnixilis, that's probably even better. So Canker Bloom, sacrifice to Obnixilis, casualty. And then Tyvar getting back Canker Bloom also potentially lets us proliferate. Although I guess Liliana is likely to make us discard Tyvar, so we shouldn't count on it. I think just make two devils then. They may decline to plus Liliana if they have valuable cards in hand. Shieldred is bad news. So we need another glare. Harvester would have been great with Tyvar. Now we just need to plus. By coin or carnage, tribute is owed. Another Shieldred discarded. And then if I attack both tokens at Liliana, we guarantee take it out. Which is probably worth it. Even though we lose an Obnixilis, it requires Shieldred to tap. 
They can now also blitz an underdog. So yeah, the game's definitely not over yet. So if her opponent blitzes underdog, they'll essentially stay at 8 since Shieldred gains 2. Flash Gorger is the play instead. I should probably start by discarding Gorge and lose 2 more to Shieldred. See what else we find. Tyvar. Okay. So what does Tyvar do for us? Get back Canker Bloom, since Harvester currently doesn't have any blood tokens to go with it. Talk about this fight for centuries. And Gallag Readers could gain some life, although Canker Bloom proliferating could be pretty nice. Obnixilus can keep plussing, gain some life back, so kinda keeps up with Shieldred. Alright, let's pass. Opponent's at 4. It's a very close game. Mishra's Foundry. Does her opponent Blitz Underdog? They're in a tough spot where they need to take out our Planeswalkers, but attacking them means being vulnerable on the way back. So Canker Bloom is happy to chump and sacrifice to proliferate, if necessary. Unfortunately, we won't be able to deny the life gain of Flesh Gorger, even if we chump with Canker Bloom and Sack, since it has a menace. So we need to block it with a second creature. So we might see an all-out attack, in which case we'll have to do the math to see if we can kill our opponent on the way back. Okay, so they're all attacking different planeswalkers. Let's say we let damage happen. Opponent will gain 3 up to 7, and then 2 more from the card drop to 9. And then we're going to be a bit short of killing our opponents, so that doesn't seem great. I can line up some blocks. Chump Shieldred. Chump Underdog. Plan to sacrifice. Damage from the token goes upstairs. And we can proliferate, which also saves Obnixilus here. I guess we could have also taken out Flesh Gorger, since it's an artifact. Was it better? Possibly, although we can always minus Tyvar. opponent goes back up to 8. 5 plus of Nixilus twice. Our opponent likely has to discard whatever card they have in hand. Otherwise we can finish them off by getting back an Epicure. So I think that's a good starting point. Right, opponent discards a land. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. So what does Tyvar do for us? Get back Canker Bloom to take out the Flesh Gorger. Ooh, milled an underdog. That's excellent. So now if we blitz underdog, we should have lethal. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. All right, so incredibly close game here against Mono Black. Every life point mattered, and we got to see a ton of our different synergies in action as we level up to Platinum. So yeah, the deck seemed quite promising. 
The interaction between Harvester, Reflection and Tyvor is the main synergy we want to build around. And then I've tried a lot of different combinations to kind of round out the deck with more treasure synergies alongside maybe Goldhound, which we can also get back with Tyvar and immediately activate. And then I tried Facebreaker to go with a Goldhound package as well, but that one didn't end up being too promising. I've tried more blood token synergies with a Voldaren Bloodcaster, which also works well if you're sacrificing creatures. Although the fact that Reflection makes tokens that don't synergize with a Bloodcaster ended up being the deciding factor for me to move on and then eventually landed on kind of the canker bloom package with obnixilis adding more three-powered creatures we're happy to sacrifice to set up a big casualty and then canker bloom being able to repeatedly take out artifacts and enchantments is also quite important and then every now and then proliferating can also be the winning move allowing you to maybe ultimate obnixilis to deal seven damage so I'm quite happy with where the deck ended up but I'm sure the deck will still evolve over time but for now I want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.